Problem 9. The electric field everywhere on the surface of a thin spherical shell of radius 0.8 meters is of magnitude 900 nan, uh, newtons per coulomb. It points radially towards, am I supposed to be towards, the center of the sphere. What is the net charge within the sphere's surface? Ah, got it. So, draw a picture. Ah, that had so much potential too. See, that just doesn't look right. Doesn't look right. So this is 0 0.8. And we have a magnitude electric field pointing towards the center of 900 newtons per coulomb. Per. And what we're getting at here is Gauss's law. So, flux which we don't actually care about here, we're just going to use it for the formula, is Q enclosed over epsilon naught time equals surface integral of E dot dA. All right, now it's pointing, the electric field is pointing radially inward, so the angle between the electric field and the uh, surface of the sphere will be the same for all parts of the sphere and electric field will be constant. So we can rewrite this as, there we go, the electric field times the uh, surface area. In this case, well, this will be 4 pi r squared. OK. So we're going to draw a Gaussian surface. And the way we're going to draw it, we're going to draw it around the, where see, what are we trying to find? Oh, we're trying to find Q enclosed. Right around the surface. So it's just on top of the surface here. This is going to be our Gaussian sphere. And that way, we're going to say that Q enclosed is the net charge that they're looking for inside the sphere's surface. And that, therefore, this equation will apply. And we're going to rewrite this then as Q enclosed equals hmm, hmm, electric field times 4 pi r squared times epsilon naught. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So this is basically Coulomb's law, where E equals KQ over R squared. And what we just did was we used Gauss's law to basically derive that, to, to derive Coulomb's law, which is pretty much the same as the for electric field, KQ over R squared, where K is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. It's just the two constants, that's, that's the relation between the two constants. So I'm going to rewrite this as E R squared over K. Right. Good. Take these guys and that guy and bam. Because I know what K is and I only have a vague idea of what E is. It's just I use it more. Do I know what K is? Yes. 3.99 times 10 to the ninth. So then we're just going to calculate this guy out. We have 0.8 and 900. So here we have 900 newtons per coulomb times 0.8 squared over 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, I'm just going to do that, all that into Wolfram. 900, I could probably simplify it, but I'm not going to. So let's make sure I, this looks right. 900 times 0.8 squared over 8. Yep. And that gives us 6.407 times 10 to the ne negative 8. 6.407 times 10 to the negative 8. 
and that is and then coulombs. I wonder if they want it in nanocoulombs. Let's see. Oh, they do want it in nanocoulombs. So I'll multiply this by 10 to the 9th. So, hmm, going off the paper. 10 to the 9th nanocoulombs per 1 coulomb. Cancel, 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 cancel. Get 10, we get 64.07 nanocoulombs. Sixty-four point zero seven nanocoulombs. All right. So, what is the distribution of charge? Hmm, excuse me. Distribution of the charge inside the spherical shell. So, we have an electric field going in. So we know that it's, um, it's going to have to be a sink on the inside. It's going in, so it has to be a negative charge on the inside. So it's a negative charge, and then. It has a spherically symmetric charge distribution. It has to be sphere, uh, spherically, spherically symmetric because we know that it's the same for all over. So it's going to be a negative charge that has a spherically symmetrical charge distribution. All right, that wasn't too bad. All right, you guys ready for number 10? I'm ready for number 10. Let's do this.